Welcome to the Orange Couch Talks, a deeper dive from our leaders into our recent teachings. Well, guys, welcome back to the Orange Couch Talks. This is episode 11, and the gang's all back together again. It's been a little while mm-hmm. since all of us have been able to sit down and talk on the orange couch. So yep. so we're all yep. back here this past weekend, Pastor Jackie and Pastor Andrew taught uh, wonderful messages. Andrew was also at Levine, so that was, that was pretty cool. I could be in multiple places. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. pretty shifty. Very fast, it was impressive. It was very impressive. Um, but uh, all, all the, the topic that you guys talked through and everything, it actually well, it was a lot on, on judgment. In 2020, it definitely has been a season that, that we've had a lot of opinions. Everybody's had a lot of opinions about a lot of things that we've probably never really had opinions on before. And and it's led to some challenges with judgment. I, mean, I remember whenever I actually flew out here to interview, um, we, we came out, we checked out Cross Church, and Cross Church was very generous, gave us this bag of goodies. And one of the things in the no bag... No judgment there. No, 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 no. It was, it was wonderful, obviously. We're here now, you know. Um, but one of the things in this goodie bag we were given was this, like, spicy hatch chili popcorn. It was delicious. Me and Cody were flying back home in the airport. She went to the bathroom or something. I was sitting there and I was hungry. So I I busted open the spicy bag of popcorn and started eating it in the airport. COVID had already started. People were concerned at that point. And I didn't have anything to drink. I didn't think that through because I started eating it and it was spicy. I started coughing. I didn't have anything to wash it down. I coughed more and more. And I had the dirtiest looks I think I've ever received in my life while I was in the airport. it, It was just from popcorn. But it's this whole new world, this whole new climate of judgment that we're dealing with. What? How are we supposed to respond? How are we supposed to live in that sort of it's environment? It's everywhere. I was flying through Hong Kong uh, on our way to Myanmar, uh, to our church plant there, Cross Church Myanmar. And uh, I, have, I take this little thing for blood pressure medicine that one of the side effects, it causes sort of a dry cough just continuously. So I've always, I'm always coughing. That's just me. And uh, flying through Hong Kong with the early stages of the pandemic was being addressed then at the beginning of the year there. And I had these coughing fits on the airplane. And you're like, you would have thought, man, I'd done something else on the airplane, you know, you <laughs> passed gas or whatever. That's now less offensive than coughing on the plane. And, and you're right, man, there's so many um, polarizing opinions about uh, this year, race issues, uh, police brutality, or fund the police, or defund the police, mm. who you're voting for, who you're not voting for, um, who won the election, who didn't really win the election. Wearing a mask. Wearing a mask, not wearing a mask. I mean, coming to your house probably for Christmas dinner is uh, the crazy uncle that never wears a mask and thinks everybody's communists that do and is the crazy aunt that thinks that you should wear a mask when you're alone in the shower. And so it's like those are the extremes that we all deal with. And even going to Christmas right now, I mean, I I have family members that are like, why would you go and see another family member and put them in danger? And then other family members that are mad that you're not coming. So there's like no winning. So, so in the midst of all this, how I mean, every single there's so many polarizing opinions. Even sometimes within the same person, there's all these polarizing. How, what kind of challenges are faced by leaders in this season? I think it's that you're gonna make somebody mad, and that's what I think we've talked a lot about. Is like we can try to take some middle ground and we've tried to and say like, hey, we're gonna go this direction, but know that someone, no matter what decision we make isn't going to be happy about it um and if you want to make it you know leaders don't make everybody happy if you want to make everybody happy go sell ice cream right um and especially in 2020 it's whatever decision it's going to ruffle some feathers either way i I totally agree um there is this is a no win zone uh for (laughs) for leaders i mean traditionally in church we're doing stuff that you have pretty much universal agreement on Hmm. Let's tell people about Jesus. Okay, we're all for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's sing songs. Okay, we're all for that. Let's build a new building. Pretty much you get universal agreement Mm -hmm. for all of those big initiatives that the church has done for, you know, generations and since Jesus departed into heaven. And now even inside the church, and I find this sad, frustrating, 
challenging. Uh, even inside the church, you have these like competing opinions that we almost have elevated these issues above the issues of the gospel mm -hmm. and the issues of the mission and the vision of the church. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to wear a mask or I want everybody to wear a mask or uh, I, I voted for this person and this person voted this elder or this person voted for somebody mm -hmm. that I don't think, you know, it, Jesus would vote for and they're the devil, the, the person you voted for. and. It's just, wow, very polarizing. And uh, we spoke um, at our Surprise Campus meeting yesterday about, I think, because you're not going to make everybody happy, um, just make yourself happy, you know. <laughs> no, no, seriously. <laughs> I think that's what Jesus said. We spent a long time discussing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, because you're not going to make everybody happy, um, I think the one thing that you can do for everyone as a leader is to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I may consistently make you unhappy right now, <laughs> and I'm sorry for that. I truly am. Because, mm -hmm. you know, pastors are... Uh, we, we love people. That's why you get into ministry yep. um, because of the people. That's why you get out of the ministry because of the people too. But mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why you get in <laughs> ministry because you have a passion and, and a concern for people. And so yeah. it's always frustrating on any level when you find out people aren't happy with you or mm -hmm. your decision because that's not the goal, right? But because of the, the, the spirit of judgment that just has shrouded this year and all of the differing opinions, we're all dealing with stuff, giving grace to the people that you know are, are frustrated. We're all dealing with stuff that mm -hmm. we've never dealt with before. Uh, we as leaders haven't dealt with this. We may be making mistakes, but they're honest mistakes because mm -hmm. we just don't know. I mean, just think about the CDC, for example. The changes in rules and guidelines since the beginning of the coronavirus. I don't think it's because they're trying to secretly, you know, sabotage my life. Maybe. I don't believe that to be true, though. I think it's because they just didn't know a lot about of a brand new virus mm -hmm. in February. They know maybe more now, mm -hmm. and maybe they're going to know more um, a year from now, probably in all likelihood. So mm -hmm. there's an evolution of thought that goes on. And I think that the best thing we can do as leaders is to be consistent. I think the best thing that we can do as church members or in any entity is to be gracefully supportive right now uh, of those leaders. Uh, um, I read just recently the su superintendent for Paradise, uh, is it Paradise Valley School mm -hmm. System, yep. uh, resigned and retire. Mm -hmm. He just said, I'm done with it because he was getting so much hate mail about decisions they were making to meet or not meet, virtual school or non-virtual school. And that's a decision, no matter what he decided, think about this, there are going to be some parents that are going to be upset with him. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure he didn't get into education to hurt kids' education. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that he got into education to teach kids and yet the frustrating thing is, and he is like, I'm just going to be done because I can't, I can't deal with this. And I don't think that's the right necessary response for leaders right now, but it is mm -hmm. challenging. And it is a culture of judgment that we live in. And so Jesus speaks to that like with <laughs> uh, a megaphone in Matthew 7. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you talked about how just how quick we are to rush to judgment in 2020. And I think one of the things we need to step back and realize, and we just need to reinforce, keep ourselves accountable, um, keep our church family and our culture, is right now, I don't know if we've ever seen it, is people are defining other people by what they support at that time or a choice they make, or you like a tweet. Uh, like I've never seen on Twitter, but now it's famous people say, like tweets don't mean endorsements, or a retweet doesn't mean endorsement, or follow doesn't mean, like just because I like this one tweet doesn't mean I agree with every single thing a person says. Yeah. And we've gotten to these camps like, oh, you support that candidate? I know who you are. You're dead to me, or this. Or, oh, you have this belief on mass or no mass? Okay, I know everything about you and I'm writing you off. It's like we've stopped getting to know the people and have polarized these issues so much that it's like there's no middle ground with a lot. And we gotta yeah. think about, Hey, there's a person behind that thought. And social media is 
made that easier for people. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a little harder to sit down and say, I think you're a jerk to your face. <laughs> it's a lot easier to tweet it or to say it on Facebook. Yeah. Or, or tweet a professional athlete that you're terrible at your job, you should yeah, get fired. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot. 300 pounds, but you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier to do that <laughs> when you're socially distanced from them. But uh, yeah, I think that's just, um, that's the world that we live in. And I think that we get to, you know, as leaders lead through this with confidence and with clarity and with consistency. Um, and that's all we can do. I mean, yeah. we can't do anything else. I, I, I think consistency is incredibly wise. Another thing that you said yesterday in our meeting that, that I think was a great guiding principle is for all leaders as we try and come through this is that, that absolutely we're going to make decisions that some people aren't going to like, but it's important to show that we care and that we've considered yeah, all yeah. viewpoints, and and it's very easy to be dismissive. Okay, this is this is what's gonna, this is gonna be what works for most people, and then disregard the people that are left out. But to try and challenge ourselves to innovate and be creative to say, all right, yeah. here's how we can here's how we can meet the most needs here, but here's how we can still defer and still create opportunities and options in ways that we've never considered before, but to put the work in to say, all right, here's how we can yep. try and increase the impact. Yeah, and that we and have. for those that are watching right now on Thursday, um, just know we made a decision kind of based on that principle of preference. It was your idea that you brought to the table. So if you don't so, like it, it's the new guy. To say, yeah. so if you do I have like no it, you're welcome. responsibility. Not, I'm perfectly willing to give him the credit <laughs> as well as whatever else comes away. But uh, you know, we get I get emails pretty regularly about, hey, we want to come back to church, but we don't feel like people are wearing masks enough. Mm -hmm. and then I get comments regularly. Pastor, why do we have to feel like we need to wear a mask? That's the world that we live in. Just so you know, your opinion is not the only opinion out there. Mm -hmm. Whatever side of the fence that you're on, you're not, uh, there's not only one side of that fence, right? Mm -hmm. And so in an effort to, to, to care for both sides, uh, your idea, again, it was TC's idea. TC uh, at crosschurchcares.com. <laughs> Send your concerns to him. Um, but... Uh, why don't we create a, a section that is mandatory mask? I know that was brilliant, TC, that you came up with that idea. I endorse it until I don't. And, uh, but yeah, we're gonna to create some space for people that have more underlying concerns about their health issues than others. Those are, those are understandable, they're mm -hmm. legitimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so creating a space for people that feel like masks need to be worn, all the time at church, uh, let's let's create something for them. So right. that's what you're talking about. We're like, let's consider both sides and let's try to care for both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, in a climate, a environment, a season where judgment and polarization is so high, it's not only challenging for leaders to, to lead, but there's consequences to live a lifestyle of judgment. What, what kind of stuff, what's the symptoms of living a judge, judgment lifestyle? I think part of it is not ever being able to like live in the moment. I think uh, the more judgy you get, the more overly critical you get. And there's a, you talked about this, there's a fine line between like concern and just being a jerk. And sometimes we can get so critical, then we become more critical. And it's like this snowball effect. Like mm -hmm. I just, you see that speck in every brother's eye now, instead of just like the few concerned. And it almost becomes like, just rules your heart um, going down that road rather than kind of backing up and seeing the people. And I think sometimes in a workplace or even like a job, um, if you make judgments about even i thought about when i was in target in the corporate world you can make early judgments about a coworker or like someone who works for you and you're like okay that's going to be the prevailing thought in my head so mm -hmm. if like this person's messed up i'm always gonna think okay that's it uh, and this is the idea i have about Just joe right schmo um, instead of like okay am i really giving a fair shake here am i mm -hmm. truly giving them a chance and understanding what led to that one time of being there so that we don't always have that preconception in mind mm -hmm. yeah yeah, you think of consequences. I mean, Jesus lays that out all the way through the Sermon on the Mount for like every mm -hmm. negative emotion or action that we have, there are consequences, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be anger or 
worry or prideful, arrogant giving, yeah. uh, or in this c case, judgment. And it, it, amazingly, the recipient of those consequences is always the person that is harboring the negative opinion or the negative emotion. For this case, judging. Uh, judge not that you be not judged, for what measure you meet it shall be measured you, to you again. And and that's like the that's like whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told your group because I preached at the Phoenix campus this past weekend that um, the older I've gotten, uh, and and not a, you don't always get better when you get older, right? Yeah. I mean, it's possible to get more cranky more opinionated, you know, bitterness dries the bones, Proverbs says, mm -hmm. and so it's possible to just become a bitter, cranky old man. But one of the things that's happened in me in my life is the older I've gotten, the more uh, forgiving I've become hmm. and the more forbearing I've become. Now you say, well, that's wonderful. That's a great quality. You're so spiritual for that. <laughs> no, I'm not spiritual. It's really not spiritual at all. Uh, it's just that I realized how much more faults I have hmm. and how much more grace I'm going to need. Hmm. So I'm, I'm doing it very selfishly <laughs> because I know I need to give Andrew grace and you grace and everybody else grace because I know I'm going to need it back from you one day. And that hmm. is exactly what the Bible teaches here is that I need to give grace and forgiveness and long suffering to people because um, I need it in return. It's the principle of the harvest, whatsoever you, so you shall also reap. I know we have Farmer Andrew here, because we're filming this in Phoenix, and just outside uh, the doors here is your farm, uh, your garden. garden. You're building a Phoenix let's, garden. Let's push I back just, a little bit. I, I got, I, we probably should give you, the, I have some real boots on, we should probably trade. These so. are more hipster boots. I yeah. am gonna try to start a trend called hipster farming. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, but it's the, <laughs> Probably not, but anyways, uh, the the law of the harvest is that you always reap what you sow. Yeah, you can't sow tomatoes seeds and reap apples. You you can't sow forgive uh, judgment and reap forgiveness. You always reap after you sow. I mean, you can't get it until you put it in the ground, and and then you always reap more than you sow. And so that's the really scary thing. If you sow a little judgment, you're going to reap a lot of judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, there's lots of consequences. And it's living a judge, living filled with judgment, such a fragile existence too. Yeah. You're wanting everybody to see life your way and see you mm -hmm. the way you want. And as soon as that doesn't happen, there's a crack, there's a breach, there's a pain, and everyone sees life differently. That God's created these differences as a fantastic, wonderful thing to enhance mm -hmm. life. So whenever we want everything to be like us, it only hurts us to not embrace the, the variety, yeah. the diversity. Definitely. And I think just the illustration, we talked about, I was in Surprise, so we talked about it a little bit this and week. Living. Uh, and so. living. Yeah. <laughs> and living. Um, mm -hmm. But just the illustration Jesus uses of having a plank in your eye. Like if I had a plank in my eye right now, I wouldn't even, I couldn't be this close to Jackie and I would be farther apart from you. So it kills our relationships because it pushes us farther apart. Mm -hmm. So the more we have that judgment, it just is going to drive a wedge um, and push us apart and damage the relationships we have with those around us. So judgment creates distance. Judgment creates uh fragility if that is that a word that a word yeah, it is so. if you say so there's a book called yeah there is fragility okay hey, so distance fragility i mean it causes consequence in life there's a lot of pains that come along with judgment and i think we as a as a society as, as around the globe are experiencing those pains right now so with all that what's the cure well, I think it's the last verse in the text we studied. It's, you know, the golden rule. Mm -hmm. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Uh, and it's not just don't do unto others. It's not a passive statement. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's an active statement. That I need to do for you what I want you to do for me. And so when I do nice stuff for you, it's getting selfish. I just want you to do it back for me. No, I think there is a, there's a reciprocal nature to, to life. That is what you sow, what you reap, what you judge. You get judged back. But what you do, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. I mean, a pretty smart guy said that. It's hard to, like... 
Well, and even make that better. Okay, <laughs> even. But he's he's going to. Well, I'll say the Jesus, platinum roll. Jesus talks, <laughs> which I don't think is is kind of crazy. But I think Jesus <laughs> even talked about like you know we think of the sacrifice. What we him coming here in Christmas is Jesus died for us not so that we would keep sinning, not so that we would keep disobeying him, not so that we would keep just running away from him, but he died for us and forgave us for our sins so that we would get closer to God. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he was doing that to expect, but the outflow of what Jesus has done for us is we should worship and love God all the more. And the only way we can truly, I think, treat others how we want to be treated, and that's why it's it's a cool thing to say the golden rule, but without God, it's just a rule that we don't keep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it is only through the power of Christ transforming, changing us. That's why I love right before that Jesus talks about asking and seeking the Father's will, because it's only by us praying to be transformed that we can truly consider others' needs and love them yeah. the way we should. I mean, the the friction and the conflict of disagreement is such a healthy process. Yeah. And part of doing unto others the way that I want done unto me is, I, I, want, I want for people to let me know when I'm going in a direction that is gonna cause me harm. And, and that's one of the, the tensions of, of our society now is everybody should be in agreement about all things. Yep. And yep. that leads to a collective harm. But Jesus yeah. is saying here, like, hey, we, like, treat others the way you want to be treated, love people, challenge people, yeah. but but the judgment... But do it in in a way that restores, Absolutely. not the way that condemns. I mean, um, if I saw a speck in your eye, you'd probably feel it. And, you know, I, if you don't have a mirror, somebody might come along and say, man, let me get that out of your eye. Let me help you. <laughs> Jesus is really close to my eye. <laughs> Jesus is not saying that we shouldn't help a brother get a speck out of his eye. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's just saying that we need to uh, look in our own lives first, but also we don't need to do it um, in a way that's condemning. We need to do it in a way that's restoring. Absolutely. And there's going to be plenty of opportunities that every single one of us has to restore and love on other people. And just like you said, Jackie, we're going to need it quite a bit ourselves. So hopefully uh, we've given you some great tools and uh, directions and, and how to face some of these uh, challenging moments in our world. But we're so glad that you jumped on with us today for the Orange Couch Talks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe, and don't forget to go out and make Jesus known.